Hello everyone! Welcome back to AAS Publishing. And on this series, which I think will be one video, we're going to cover the top 50 most cited articles. And before we get to the main event, I have a, uh, a couple of announcements. Um, one, I got lights. <laughs> we're a lot brighter. Got some umbrella lighting, so it should be good. Uh, the second announcement is, and this has been coming out in the uh, AAS mailings that have been going out over the last couple months, but I'll just raise it here. Um, AAS editors are available for seminars on the AAS journals. While they're out there, they can also do double journey, double duty, uh, doing a science presentation. So if you're interested in hearing about the journals, um, any topic in particular uh, we've covered on these uh, videos or otherwise, uh, go ahead and get in touch with me uh, at uh, my email address given down there at the bottom of the screen, my name at AASJournals.org, uh, and we're quite willing to uh, help split the expenses uh, to come on out and talk about some science, talk about some journals, and um, have a good one. All right, so let's get on with the top 50 most cited articles. So before we begin again, I want to say that uh, the data I'm about to show made extensive use of uh, ADS. And I particularly want to call out and thank uh, Edwin Henneken for his help here, because the data that I'm going to show, although while it is in ADS, uh, is not available to mere mortals. Uh, there's not enough controls on the queries that you can make to do what I want to show. Uh, and so Edwin was super helpful uh, in doing a, a custom cut through uh, the data for me and uh, getting it getting it all the raw data together. So thank you, Edwin. Okay, so what is it I want to show? Um, I'm not going to focus in particular on you know you know who published the top 50 articles. Um, uh, you know that can be a topic for another day, perhaps. But what I'm interested in is the top 50 articles as they evolve over time. Uh, for those published in a given year. So, before I start showing the plots, let's be clear on what it is I want to show. So, pick a year. Let's say it's 2010. So, papers published in 2010. At the end of 2010, you ask, okay, uh, what, are, what are the citations to all those papers that were published in 2010? And then what are the top 50 published in 2010 that have the 50, the top 50 to have the most citations? Okay. Now let the time go on. It's an hour at 2011. You do the same exercise. You ask, of papers published in 2010, list all the citations, pick the top 50. Are the top 50 at the end of 2011 the same as 2010? Probably not. We'll see. Uh, and then let time go on. 2012, now of all the papers published in 2010, go ahead and tally up their citations. There'll be larger numbers, of course, because uh, time has gone on and, and they've gathered more citations. But as of 2012, what are the top 50 most cited papers there? Repeat, 2013, 2014, and so on. So I'm interested in the evolution of the top 50 and what trends and lessons one can get out of that, both with respect to individual articles and, since this is AAH publishing, with respect to the journals. So let's go ahead and dig into the data and exactly what we just did. So this is the, for articles published in 2010, this is the evolution of the 50 most cited articles from 2010 to the end of 2015 when this uh, data set was taken. Uh, uh, it's not gonna hurt any of the lessons that we're gonna learn out of this because it doesn't go to the end of 2018. We can update that data set later, but the lessons are, are already present uh, and we'll learn some stuff. So uh, on the y-axis is the article ranking. So the number one ranked article, the one that has the most citations, uh, down to the top 50, so the 50th most cited um, papers. So we go from 2010 and this runs out to 2015 and I've colored them in groups of five, so top five, top 10, top 15, 20, et cetera, all the way down to top 50, which I shouldn't say even down to. Top 50 is great. If you had a top 50 paper, that's fantastic. It's wonderful. Um, so 
uh, things, so those are in colored. Things that are in white, so things that start off on the left axis, uh, are, are articles that were at one point in the top 50, but are no longer in the current top 50. So they have dropped off the top 50 list as time goes on. So you can see that in the first couple of years, let's say the first three years or so, there's a lot of um, activity as papers come up. They may be really well cited in that first year or two, and then, and then they drop off. Uh, there will be other ones that come up in later years, 2012, and then they start their rise, uh, and then some will go up, some will come down. Um, so in general, there's, there's a lot of activity, I guess I would call it, in the first couple of years. And from this plot, it looks like, well, there's still a fair amount of activity going on by 2015, but not as much as in the first couple of years. Uh, and so what those papers are, I list on the right there. Those are the um, ADS bib codes, because I want to um, not put a particular focus on who published what, but the bib codes are there. You can, you can go figure it out um, on what those are. Uh, and so just journal-wise, we have the AJA, ANA, RevMod P, ANA, MNRAS, uh, Nature uh, going up. And, oh, I should say that I took a very wide definition of what astronomy and astrophysics is. So basically, if uh, ADS is calling it astronomy and astrophysics, I took it. Um, and there we go for 2010. Now let's make the baseline longer. We're going to do this over till we get to decades, decadals, multiple decades, and see what the trends are. So this is sort of the short of it, right? This is the, the, a very short baseline of about five years. So now let's go to papers published in 2005. Okay, of the papers published in 2005, what is the evolution of the top 50 most cited papers? Y-axis is the same, rankings 1 to 50, but now the baseline is 10 years. Um, and uh, now you can see a little bit more of the trend that there's a lot of activity in the first couple of years, three, four, even five years, and things are still bouncing around even after 10 years uh, in that top 50. Um, there are a little bit slower evolution for the most highly ranked ones, but evolution nonetheless. Uh, and we can also see the, the nature of the um, Journals that are changing. We got an MN RAS one ranked uh, number one, the Nature, the APJ, ANA, uh, and so on. And you can go down there. So this is a 10 year baseline. Let's extend it out even farther. So now we're going to go to a 15 year baseline. Um, again, the white lines here on the right are articles which were in the top 50 but are no longer in the top 50. So you've got examples here where something will start off pretty high, and one of these even goes all the way out mm, to about 2015, uh, where it fell off the top 50 uh, on a very sort of diagonal kind of pattern. Uh, you can see that there are late bloomers coming up, stuff that didn't start seeing citations until, here, look around 2010 or so. You've got articles coming up, uh, you know, nine years after publication, and also, whoa! These are pretty good, and they go on up, and they are currently ranked in the top 50, and at least two of these here are still rising. Um, so even after 15 years, there is evolution on sort of the, the papers that the community values, the articles that the community values uh, on the long term, which is a little bit different than what happens on the short term. So now let's go to the longest baseline, where we have um, uh, ADS feels they have pretty complete coverage which is going to be 1995 all the way to 2015. So this is decadals. So this is two decades uh, worth of evolution in the top 50 most cited papers. So again, articles published in 1995. How does that evolution go? This makes it pretty clear -er on decadal time scales. If you look at it, there's a lot of motion in the first couple of years. Uh, and then things sort of settle out. You still have late bloomers coming up, sometimes 10. 15 years after publication, where uh, the community begins to value them such that they pop into the top 50. Um, and we can take a look at the nature of the journals at this point. It's uh, APJS, Supplement, PSAP, Nature, APJ, Annual Review article coming in here at uh, number, uh, uh, number five. 
Uh, and there's still evolution past this in 2018. So as I mentioned, I understand this is not, uh, you know, it's missing three years here, but it's not really going to change the, uh, the message. So how does this look like journal-wise? So these are the individual articles. And um, let's just take a look at 1995. So we've got this plot here. Uh, and what is the distribution of the journals within this top 50 as time goes on? So again, published in 1995. Uh, and then the evolution of the top 50. And this is something you can get out of, of ADS. You don't need uh, Edwin's uh, magic to do this. You can do this on your own. So this is the, the number of articles in the top 50, uh, published in 1995, 96, 97, all the way out to 2015. So uh, in the early years, so blue here is the AAS journals writ large, so supplements, uh, APJ, AJ. Um, yeah as it goes through. And you can see the other journals listed here. Uh, if it's blank as it goes up to 50, that means that they were a, a smattering, a smorgasbord of other journals that had articles in the top 50. So taking a look at this uh, writ large, you can see that the AAS journals has the largest footprint in articles in the top 50, typically about half of them overall globally. Uh, over 20-year time scales uh, are AAS journals. Uh, some journals, like those in purple, or uh, those, yeah, those in purple, uh, they peter out. So they sort of have a larger impact in the first couple of years when there's a lot of evolution on the articles that uh, matter to the community on long, long time scales until about after 2007. Uh, after 12 years or so, there's no purple. Uh, they're just not in the top 50 anymore. Uh, the red ones uh, have a fairly consistent, persistent pattern, at least for those articles published in 1995. So typically five, six, seven uh, articles for the, the red ones in the top 50. Um, yeah, and so this is sort of the evolution of, of the journals as it goes by. Uh, and. Uh, the AAS journals are, are doing quite well. Um, and I get it, right? AAS editor says AAS journals are great. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I get it. <laughs> but nevertheless, um, the data is what the data is, independent of you know, the messenger. Um, so. so what are the takeaways from this, this exercise of the top 50 most cited articles uh, over time? So I think there's two primary takeaways. One is the short of it, and one is the long of it. So the short of it is that there's a lot of uh, noise activity uh, in the top 50 most cited articles in the first couple of years after publication in whatever year you want to choose. And it's kind of curious that in this window where there's all this activity uh, amongst the most cited articles, this is the traditional window for measuring journal impact factors. So it's, it's funny that um, you know, how a journal is ranked is taking place that the dominant metric for that is the first couple of years after publication. And that's exactly the window where there's all this, you know, evolution. Um, and in general, in broad terms, that uh, articles that are valued one to two years after publication are generally not the same articles that are valued 10, 20 years afterward. Uh, and that's my second point, is that it takes decades or more for our field to decide which articles have long-term value. Um, I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, again, we're available for coming out and talking about the journals, talking about the science uh, that we do individually, and uh, get in touch with me if you'd like to have that. Hope you found this fun. Hope you found it interesting. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.